This is a video about empathy. Empathy is the ability to truly imagine what it's like to be in another person's situation, such that we can really understand their thoughts and feelings at the time. When we empathise with someone, we almost end up feeling a bit of what the other person's feeling because we have so tuned into their situation. It's almost like we're experiencing what they are experiencing as well. You've probably heard the word sympathy, which is similar to empathy, but empathy is a bit different. I'll explain using an example. So say for example, a friend was upset because their pet guinea pig had died. You could show sympathy or be sympathetic by saying how sorry you were that their pet had died, but it would not necessarily affect how you were feeling. However, if you were being empathetic or showing empathy, you would actually start to feel some sadness yourself. It might seem like feeling sad because your friend feels sad might not be a good idea. But the thing about empathy is, it really helps us to be kinder and more understanding towards other people. It also helps you work out what could be the best help or support for anyone having a hard time. So because empathy tends to make us kinder and more likely to understand other people's situations, it also means we're more likely to try and help and support somebody experiencing a difficult situation or unenjoyable emotions. Now some people tend to be more empathetic than others just naturally, but the good news is we can all learn to show more empathy. So now I'm going to share my guide to being empathetic. Tip one, take time to be curious about what's happening to other people. Some people don't show empathy because they don't stop, take time and make effort to imagine how another person might be feeling when they are upset. To empathise, you need to imagine stepping into their situation and imagine what it would be like for them in that situation. Tip number two, listen. You can only deepen your understanding of another person's experience by listening to them. Let them speak as much as they need to. To empathise, you need to put the focus onto the person you are listening to. Therefore, try to make the conversation about them as much as possible. Try also not to interrupt and don't make the conversation about yourself while the person is telling you what happened and how they feel. Tip number three. Remember that whatever anyone is feeling is real for them. So even if you think you would not be upset in the same situation, you can only empathise if you try to understand why they are feeling how they are and if you fully accept that they are feeling what they are feeling. Emotions are true experiences for whoever is feeling them. And tip number four. Whenever someone is experiencing an unenjoyable emotion, Trying to empathise is usually the best place to start if you wish to help that person. Some situations can be easier for us to empathise with than others, but whatever the situation, empathy will always make you more likely to care and want to help, so it's often a good place to start. As I said before, if you tune into someone's thoughts and feelings, it also means you are more likely to know what will help them and what won't. Remember, empathy is a kind gift we can give to someone as it helps us to care and want to help when someone is experiencing an unenjoyable emotion. It also makes us a very good friend. Empathising with people experiencing quite different emotions might need us to help in quite different ways. So, for example, we're unlikely to empathise with and support somebody who's feeling sad in quite the same way as we would somebody who's feeling angry. So let's consider four different emotions and imagine how we might empathise with and support and help somebody or a friend experiencing each of these emotions. Let's start with sadness, which is usually quite an easy emotion to empathise with as we can usually tune into the feelings around something upsetting happening quite easily. When people feel sad, they tend to be quiet and gentle, so it's usually easy to approach or connect with friends who are feeling sad. Sadness often makes many of us want to comfort and care for whoever is feeling it. When people are sad, they often just need to know someone cares and understands how they are feeling. 
They might want a hug. They might want to be on their own, or they might just like someone sitting with them for company. They might want to talk about what happened, or they might just want to have a cry. They will probably appreciate people checking on them every now and then, which will also remind them that people love them and care. And often when people feel sad, they just need to feel like they are loved. Now let's take a look at worrying or worry. It can sometimes be quite hard to empathise with and help somebody who's worrying because worrying is an unhelpful thought that goes round and round in somebody's head. So it can sometimes seem like they're just repeating what they're worrying about. And that can sometimes make it hard for you to feel like you can help them. But whether you are someone who tends to worry or not, it's easy to see how worrying can make people feel awful and empathising with their struggle can mean you end up wanting to help. When people worry, they usually need someone to listen to them and show some understanding. They might need to be told about rumination, what it is and what can help with it. They might need reassurance that they will be able to cope or that one day this worry will seem silly and no longer bother them. And they might benefit from you trying to help them sort out any problems to do with their worry if there is something that could actually be sorted. Now let's consider anger. When somebody's really angry in front of us, it often and usually triggers quite uncomfortable emotions inside of us. That's what it's designed to do, make people take notice. So there's no surprise there. However, when somebody is actually really angry, it's usually because they feel threatened in some way. So although anger looks like a really powerful and forceful emotion, it actually usually means somebody is struggling and they need some help and support. So empathising with them makes us more likely to want to help and support them rather than just be scared of their anger. So although anger is an emotion that seems to be about warning people off, we can still try and understand what is bothering the person who is angry, which can then mean we might be able to help. When people are angry, they often need to feel heard and like someone has really listened. Angry people do usually calm down quite quickly if they feel like they have been listened to. They might want to talk about what has triggered their anger after they've calmed down and work out a solution for the difficulties they are having. Or they might want either reassurance that whatever triggered their anger won't happen again or be helped to understand why whatever triggered their anger needed to happen. Lastly, let's consider embarrassment. Well, embarrassment is like a strong wave of awkwardness has washed over us all of a sudden. It can be a very uncomfortable feeling, but fortunately it doesn't usually last for very long. Feeling embarrassed is a bit like feeling shame. It means a person can suddenly stop in their tracks, lose all confidence and feel that other people are staring and laughing at them. It can make a person want to disappear really quickly from whatever situation made them embarrassed. So when someone's embarrassed, they often need reassurance that whatever happened was no big deal. They need to be reminded that even though they're feeling terrible, other people won't think about what happened as much as they are thinking about it. And they might need some help seeing the funny side of what happened so they can laugh at it. Do you think you could empathise with someone in each of the following situations? What help, support or comforting words do you think someone might need if they were in each of these situations? Take them one at a time and you'll need to stop the video to do this properly. Now let's have a go at empathising with somebody who's having a bit of a tough day. I'm about to read you a description of Max's day. See if you can decide how Max might be feeling at different points in the story. I'll read the story slowly, but you might want to stop the video while you think about each part. Max was late for school because his mum couldn't drop him off that day like she usually did. When he walked into the classroom, everyone looked up and stared at him. Poppy and Anish whispered something to each other and Max wondered what they might have said. Max sat down at his desk. Jane sat next to him 
but she had her back turned on him. When Jane turned round, she made a joke about how messy his hair was. When Max said, that doesn't make me feel very good, Jane just laughed at him and called him stupid. During break, a bit later, Max couldn't find anyone to talk to at first, so he wandered around on his own. Eventually, Ben came over to talk to him. But Ben just went on and on about the football team, and Max felt like he couldn't really get a word in. After break in maths, Max got into a muddle, but the teacher was too busy to notice he was asking for help and appeared not to understand what it was that Max was finding difficult. The lesson was also very boring. Things looked like they were going to get better in history as Max was drawing a storyboard of the Battle of Hastings. But then the teacher came and told him that he needed to finish it more quickly so he could write out a version of the story as well. He hadn't realised he had to write it out as well as draw it. He asked the teacher if he liked his drawing, but the teacher said he thought it was just messy. So how did you get on with empathising with poor Max? So what have we learnt? Well, we've learnt that empathy is about trying to understand the thoughts and feelings of another person in any particular situation. We've learnt that empathy helps us to be kinder more understanding and more tolerant of other people. We've learnt that when people are experiencing different unenjoyable emotions, they tend to need help in slightly different ways. And we've also learnt, hopefully, that empathy is a very kind gift that we can give to another person.